Hello and welcome to the RDK podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Walker, and today I'm joined by the brilliant Pret Joseph, the head of practice of RDK and Gateways at Tata Alexi. Pleasure to have you here today, Pret. The first episode of 2022. How are you doing? Doing good, Jamie. Pleasure to meet you also. Very happy new year to you and all the viewers. No, I've been I've been really excited to, to, to have you on as a guest and, 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 and get talking um, about your involvement. So let's jump straight into this, shall we? Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background with Tata Alexi. Yeah, I started my career around 30 years back and uh, primarily working in telecom and media domain. Uh, in fact, I started with a 50 bits per second uh, telex machine. I worked on the access, edge and core of the network in both routing and switching and on the media industry. Uh, my assignments were primarily in the technology front and the management front. I joined Tata Alexi around six years back and was responsible for one of the award winning products of Tata Alexi, the Falcon Eye, the complete uh, uh, multi-screen testing solution. You can test the complete play out for the set of boxes, the mobiles or any of the, any, you name the device, it will test it, TVs, anything. And uh, the best part of the product was the quality of experience, where uh, especially which is relevant in the IP transmission. So I took charge of the RDK practice around five years back and uh, today my team and I work together with customers to help them roll out the RDK based CPEs and other CPEs. That's what I do, or that's my background. Wow, wow. So a, a deep career in, 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 in technology, right? And I guess, I guess for anybody who's, who's listening or, or watching in now um, and, uh, and who are not familiar with Tata, um, give us a sort of in explanation of, of, of what you guys do and where you sit. Yeah. So Tata Alexi is uh, one of the world's leading provider of technology and design services across industries we operate in. Uh, we operate in the media and communications vertical, transportation and automotive, and healthcare. We also have an award-winning uh, design services wing. Okay. Our media division has been established around 30 years back, and we are catering to telecom and uh, cable operators, studios, broadcasters, OEMs, and uh, silicon vendors. And uh, we have products and solutions to cater to these industry verticals to complement our services. So that's in a brief about Tata Alexi. That's it. So obviously, I you know I know personally uh, a lot of the engineers that I work with work hand in hand with 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 your engineers as well. Um, the feedback is always incredibly positive. Um, the, the the environment that you create for, for for engineers to grow in, right? But uh, we'll probably touch on that later. Um, but Tata Alexi have made a considerable contribution towards excelling in RDK. Um, can you tell us how Tata's journey in RDK started? Yeah, we started this journey in 2012. Uh, we started working with Comcast and Comcast started after RDK, mainly on the video front. And ever since uh, we started working, we have been contributing to the RDK and the community ever since it was formed. Okay. We started with RDK video and later moved on to RDK broadband from its inception. Today, we work with operators, OEMs, and SOAPs on both RDK Broadband and RDK Video. Uh, we st outside Comcast, we started uh, our journey by implementing RDK for a Portugal-based leading operator and both on RDK Broadband as well as on RDK Video based on the experience we gained and it has been a successful implementation. And uh, we also found that RDK is bound to grow. So we started making investments in RDK and this was mainly aimed at shortening the time to market lowering the cost and also focus on, solution, focus on solutions and accelerators around RDK. Okay, okay, so your, your involvement stems um, deeply, as you said, right, involved with Comcast from back in, in, in 2012. I guess, um, how do you engage with customers um, you know, recently and, and, and what have been the changes you have brought to RDK as, as a platform? Can you give us some more details on that? Sure. See, uh, as I told you, like we work with operators, we work with OEMs, and uh, we also uh, work with the SOCs for RDK implementation. And today, we engagement or uh, we engage or uh, we do an end-to-end -end engagement with customers. So it starts with the consultancy. The consultancy will be mainly on the features, the effort, and timelines. We we decide like we finalize the set of features which are required for an advanced uh, 
video platform or a RDK video platform or a RDK broadband platform. And we also arrive at the effort which is because it has got an impact on the cost and we also uh, decide upon the indicative timelines, what will be the engineering time, what will be the release time and uh, how many additional platform, how additional platforms can be induced and all those things. And once it is planned, we move on to the system integration phase where we start adding uh, features which are very specific to the operators. And uh, also, once the this is over, we start moving into the deployment scenario where it will be the interoperability uh, testing, the acceptance testing and also the field trial support everything. And once it is done, we move into the deployment, uh, the post deployment phase. So post deployment phase, we mainly focus on the maintenance of the code as well as the defect fixing, uh, new feature introduction. And also there are a set of solutions where we monitor and manage the field deployment. So today that means like we have an end-to-end -end offering in RDK. And uh, see, we try to add value to the customer through accelerated deployments, lower cost, and also through specific solutions which uh, fit RDK. And uh, also like, uh, see, we have been working on RDK for long. So we bring in uh, processes which are which are best for RDK. For example, like with our unified uh, development model, we are able to deploy multiple platforms for multiple countries for the same customer using the using a single code base. And uh, that's a lot of advantage because if a defect comes, you fix it once and it is uh, it's fixed everywhere. And we also have the scaled agile model, which is specifically adapted for RDK. So that's a that's a process uh, improvements which we are bring in, which uh, which we help customers. And also we tell the customers like uh, move away from the legacy. So it's like RDK is a platform. We always say that see RDK is a platform than a set of boxes. So a platform, what it does is it actually takes the data, derives meaningful information which can be used for further, for maybe for uh, monitoring the customer experience or for monitoring uh, the, uh, whatever issues are coming in the field. So use this data use it for evaluating the experience, improve the experience, or uh, uh, use it for OPEX reduction. So that is the platform view of RDK. And today, we work with a vision of, uh, on the broadband front, it is the premium broadband, where customer experience, monetization, and OPEX reduction uh, are the key parameters. And for video, it will be a uh, shorter time to market based on the video accelerator platform. Wow, wow. So. As you said, right, pretty much covering off every aspect that, R that RDK can offer, especially for the operators and partners that, that, that you work with in this aspect. Um, I think you were mentioning about your vision for, 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 for premium broadband, namely around experience, monetization, and OPEX reduction. Um, can you explain that a little bit more? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so. Experience is mainly centered around the data and we have our own product which is ICX, the Intelligent Customer Experience Platform and uh, this is based on a set of indexes and data uh, which can influence the experience and also it's basically about measuring and evaluating and uh, suggesting improvement for the experience. Another aspect which we are focusing is on the monetization. So monetization, traditionally broadband has been either on a, uh, it has been monetized either on a, a bandwidth basis or time of usage basis. But what we are aiming is to enhance the revenues for the operators and also enhance value for the customers. So what we believe is broadband will be the center of home networking. Okay? What it means is like all networking services which are there uh, typically for offices that will be available for home. An example will be a parental control. So a customer will be able to select from a bouquet of parental controls or it can select a set. Uh, it can set select from a bouquet of firewall services, or it can be services like QoS, where uh, we give uh, more priority to video in the in the evening time, or like somebody who is into who enjoys gaming, give better bandwidth for gaming. So, a application based QoS that can be subscribed as a service. Okay, and also uh, we can provide IoT as a uh, service for monetization. Okay. And all this is based on the Tata Alexi service delivery platform. And service delivery platform has got two components. One is the cloud, where the, all, all the applications uh, reside and which gives a mobile interface where the customers can select their applications. And also there is a component inside the gateway. And the beauty of this, this is that 
or the applications are runtime applications. So traditionally, if an operator or somebody wanted to deploy an application, it had to be built into the code and uh, you know the firmware build process is a bit complex. Whereas these can be runtime applications. Just click uh, a few buttons on your mobile or on your uh, laptop and then the service is deployed. And in turn, these all, all these services can be monetized as a pay-as-you-go services. And uh, this will also enable independent uh, uh, providers of firewall or parent control or IoT services to provide uh, third-party services within an operator's network. And so it will be a win-win situation for the service, uh, third-party service providers as well as for the operators. And customer will, will be the final beneficiary. And another area we are focusing is on the OPEX reduction. So OPEX reduction is uh, basically, if you look at uh, one of the key reasons for the calls to uh, calls today is uh, to the call center is the Wi-Fi. So if you can improve the Wi-Fi, the calls uh, can significantly come down. Okay. So what we do is we look at de uh, defect identification and we use data to find their occurrence we use the logs to find how they occur. One is like we will be able to turn around the defects faster. Second is we will be able to set the priority. So the priority may be less for a crash whereas like if we find something is affecting let's say 1000 users that will hold a higher priority. And since it is driven by data, since it has all the logs, the fix also becomes easy. And basically like uh, the ICX and the, uh, we call it as the smart triage. The ICX and the smart triage will operate together so that we will be able to achieve the OPEX reduction and a uh, better fix rate, better turnaround rate, which in turn will enhance the customer experience. Wow, I, I guess I, I guess from from our point of view, focusing on those very different aspects, improving the overall customer journey, right, is obviously going to retain a lot more business for, for, for operators. Um, you were talking about um, ICX. Um, can you give us some more insight into ICX, the product, as well? Yeah, sure. Uh, it's First of all, ICX uh, stands for the Intelligent Customer Experience, and it's a deployed product, and we are monitoring millions of devices using that today. And we, I was telling you in the, uh, in the beginning that RDK as a platform it uses data. So what we do is like we use a lot of data which is provided by the RDK devices. Okay. So they fall into, there are a set of data models, there are logs, there are alarms and triggers, and there are telemetry parameters. So we use all this data, correlate them, and evaluate the customer experience. So just to give an example, like in a deployment scenario, how we used to handle deployment in the past, like uh, used, we used to have field trials, and then we used to have slabs of deployment, 20, 200, 2000, and uh, we used to evaluate the health of a deployment, mainly using the call center data and things like that. Whereas what we say is like, derive the data from the device and then use it. So it is simple, like uh, define a performance index and collect all the de details which are related to the performance index and then start uh, uh, see whether the performance index has gone up for the new release or not. If it has gone up, then it's good to go in for the next lab of release, uh, uh, next lab of deployment, which may be 200 or 2000. And that way we'll be able to have data driven deployments. Another example is uh, we are defined in the ICX itself, we are defined a Wi-Fi happiness index just to give some parameters which will influence that there is a signal to rate, uh, uh, noise ratio, there can be an RSSI and there can be different parameters or the band uh, usage. So when a customer calls and complains, we can always say that your indifference is high or your uh, RSSI is uh, having a problem. So go in for either place your TV more near your broadband box or uh, go in for a mesh. So that way we'll be able to, uh, uh, the problems we'll be able to, one is pro proactively we'll be able to identify the problems. Second is reactively also we'll be able to give suggestions because we have got all the data about what is happening inside the box. And there are features like self-provisioning, it can monitor alarms and triggers, and also it can provide uh, data for closer monitoring of a subset of devices. Somebody says that my uh, service is erratic or my video service is erratic then put it in a watch list or uh, monitor those devices with raw data more closely. And again, ICX provides a set of uh, dashboards and uh, f uh, dashboards and uh, other uh, information to suit, uh, uh, to suit any of the business needs. I say, and I think with 
refining the data as well and as you said right being able to use that data for continuous deployments and updates as well consistently improving that user experience again is it's is just another one of the um, positive impacts of, of, of yes, using this yes, platform exactly i guess then Pret, you know given your position you oversee everything from a high level you're involved with with operators what do you think the top three things to remember when adapting um, to RDK as a, as a product or service? Yeah. So first thing is like, uh, we need to have the platform view, which is a paradigm shift, of, which has been brought in by RDK. So we need to look at uh, uh, the data angle of RDK and we need to leverage all this data to make significant gains. It can be either uh, uh, popex reduction or it can be a faster turnaround for a defect and it's all about customer experience. So improve the customer experience using the data. That's the first thing I would say. And uh, the second I would say is that if anyone is adopting RDK, always be aligned to the community release and contribute back to the community. There are a lot of advantages of contributing back to the community because next time when we take it, it will be a part of the main build and also once we contribute it, it is going to be used by uh, many uh, many operators or many partners and if there are any any defects or anything like that it is highly likely that that is found and that is resolved and uh, the third and uh, uh, again another important point is uh, use the services of a seasoned system integrated like Tata Alexi and uh, we bring in the experience the processes which will reduce the risk and also the project can be managed within the timeline and within the uh, cost okay and also, a uh, system integrator like that, Alex will provide accelerators and solutions which can further enhance the deployments. So, uh, I guess um, as well, you were mentioning about RDK organizing as a competency within Tata Alexi. Um, what does the competency do? Yeah, the first and uh, foremost, what we do as a competency is uh, uh, we focus on addressing scalability. Okay. And uh, we are the best in class training developed over the years and RDK engineer, engineers go through this training and also through a certification before they are inducted into the, uh, in, into the into a project or a customer assignment, which is like, and again, like we have been following this process for quite long. So the, the our materials gets enhanced, our training material gets reviewed and then enhanced based on the needs. For example, like Mesh is a, a new addition or like a LT interface to a, uh, LT interface is a new addition. Fiber is a new addition to RDK. And uh, the next thing which we do is to develop solutions, accelerators and uh, processes to support RDK. So I told you about uh, SDP, service delivery platform. I told you about the ICX. All these are developed by the competency or, uh, you know, it is it is developed by teams who are working with the competency, RDK competency or the RDK practice. And also we acquire knowledge about the happenings in the industry and then we also share this knowledge across teams and this helps in uh, understanding what are the customer needs at a larger spectrum and also we work in nurturing a team of architects for upcoming assignments because we always we always uh, look at constant improvement or a consistent improvement of our people and another area where we focus is the partnership and alliances okay okay so obviously the Competency within RDK, uh, within within Tata Alexi, it's 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 it's, it's a big thing for, for Tata, right? We can see this the the investment that you guys put into it, the involvement that you have uh, with RDK Central them, themselves. From your position, Pret, where do you see the future of RDK? Oh, I see a great future for RDK because uh, if you look at the deployment base, it has been growing like anything more operators are adapting it, especially the multi-country deployments, multi-platform deployments, RDK is coming. So if I look at RDK video, I see that uh, RDK video will be uh, with the accelerator platform, the deployment or the adaptability of RDK is, will go up and we are already seeing that more, we are getting more uh, inquiries, we are doing more business on the RDK video front with the accelerators. Okay. And again, like another game changer is going to be the RDK on TV. So RDK on TV with a camera, that is going to be a complete game changer for the industry. Uh, and uh, it can, the applications can vary uh, than a TV, the applications can move to health, uh, to gaming or to another other immersive experiences. That is what I see on the video front. And on the broadband front, RDK will be the center of home networking. 
and it will be offering an always on internet with a 5G backup or a 4G backup and also it will be providing bandwidth aggregation so that the bandwidth can be further enhanced. Uh, you will find that uh, more and more devices will get uh, connected to Wi-Fi. So if you look at uh, uh, four years back or something like that, it, it would have been around uh, 10 devices connected. Today it will be around 30 devices connected in a home with IoT gaining prominence. And uh, another thing which we see is like services will be the key to the success of uh, operators. So if you can op offer more services in broadband front, let's say that the firewall, the parental control or gaming accelerators or maybe a VPN for working from home, which can be deployed on the fly in the single click, all this is going to be the, uh, that, that that's going to enhance the customer value and that's going to be the future. And uh, to say Wi-Fi will be the winning edge. So whoever has the better Wi-Fi, new Wi-Fi uh, standards are emerging, Wi-Fi 6 is coming. So whoever has, can provide the better Wi-Fi, they will be the clear winners here. And also the platform view, which I was mentioning about, uh, that is going to grow. Like more and more features are going to come into the platform. The box will be there, but more decisions are going to be taken in the cloud. Uh, uh, and uh, this data is going to be used in multiple ways. Uh, more than evaluating customer experience, there may be other applications which will be coming. So leveraging data, that is going to be the another future which I see. Leveraging data in a better way. That's it. Well, Pret, thank you for sharing your thoughts on that. And I, I, I completely agree with you. I think, I think my, my personal excitement lies with the RDKV side of it, um, seeing how that's going to advance. But then obviously, right, the, the broadband as aspect, how that video is delivered into the home is, is as you said, it's going to probably play the most important factor. In, in, in the growth and deployment of RDK. Um, but Pret, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure discovering more about yourself, Tata Alexi, and, 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 and your involvement with RDK. Um, just for our listeners, uh, where can we find you online? Oh, you can just uh, find us online at uh, tataalexi.com. Okay. And uh, you can just send a shoot email to info at tataalexi.com or uh, send me a mail, pret.j at uh, that will be the best way and this discussion has been exciting and uh, you know putting all these aspects like it's more of a practitioner's aspect that uh, i've been trying to provide absolutely well I, I look forward to watching the advancements from your team over over the next 12 months and guys please make sure that you follow us on twitter and linkedin using at the rdk podcast and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you get a notification every time we upload a new episode. But for now, take care and let's continue the conversation. Mm -hmm.